In this second part of the step-by-step -step guide to prepare uh, Italian pizza in baking pan or Italian pizza in tray, if you prefer, we are going to cover two more phases that are the last ones before we go to cook the pizza dough. The first one will be the preparation of the dough for the final fermentation, so after we waited at least 24 hours uh, for the first fermentation in fridge, we are going to prepare the dough balls and to put them in, the, um, other, in other containers to have the second fermentation indeed. And then the, the, the other phase that we will cover will be the stretching of the dough balls. So after they fermented, we are going to prepare them to, put, to be in the baking pans before, of course, they will be uh, cooked. My name is Stefano, I'm the owner of Italian Pizza Secrets and I'm going to share with you some more Italian style pizza secrets today. So for this operation you need to have, of course, a kitchen scale. I'm using, instead of putting the dough directly on the kitchen scale, I'm using also a dish. And you need to have also a dough scraper because this will help in creating the uh, dough ball. And as you can see here we have the dough that was taken out of the fridge. Uh, I didn't show you in the previous video but essentially uh, it didn't grow too much, it didn't rise and this is exactly what we want. We don't want it to uh, rise while it's in the, in the fridge. It's exactly the goal that we want to reach in the fridge. So let me move the dough here this way, as you can see, we use the uh, oil in the, in the, in the, uh, on the base of the container and then the, the dough is not sticking to it. This is very, very good as it is today. It's a now kind of a rectangle. Let me turn on the kitchen scale. And we will prepare uh, two dough balls. Uh, one will be of around 700 grams and it will be for a, a baking pan that is 30 by 40 centimeters. And then we have a roughly 350 grams that will be uh, going into the small baking pan that is uh, 20 by 30. Of course, uh, it can uh, slightly change it depending on, on, on the, how thick you want the pizza. Um, and it, it, again, in, on, on my website, on the Pizza Recipe Calculator, you can decide uh, how much a dough you are going to have. So we said roughly 700 grams for the big one. So let's try to make it this way. Let's see how weight is this. This is 730 grams. Let's see how much will be this one. 310. So maybe we want to add a bit here. Yes, so now we have 330 and the remaining here, it will be roughly 700 grams. Now, this is one more important part. We are going to do essentially a kind of a folding again. Yeah, so just closing the, yeah, and we are going to do again folding, kind of folding, it doesn't, you know, we don't really need to be really, uh, precise in this case, but I prefer to do it again. And the reason why is that in this case, we are going to make the, uh, the structure of the gluten grid even stronger. And uh, we are going to repeat more or less the same movements. The only different movement that we are going to have is this one. So we will be doing essentially, we will move the dough on, on the base of it. Yeah, so we did a kind of a folding and then we are doing this way of double preparation. Be careful, you don't want to have such thing to happen. So I just stop here. I create a little bit more tension on the double and I keep it here. And then I'm going to do the same here with this one. A bit of folding as we did the other times. Very, very similar. And also in this case, I'm not going to manipulate too much because otherwise the risk is that I have the same as the other side. So I'm just doing a bit of turning around. And as you can see, I take the dough, I uh, stretch it and put it down, stretch it and put it down, stretch it and put it down. It's uh, this, this probably is not exactly the, 
the easiest one. What you can do on contrary, if you are just starting, I recommend you to take from the side and put inside, side inside, side inside, side inside, and you continue more un until you get uh, again some kind of uh, smooth surface here as well. I'm not doing that anymore because it's already more than ready. And then again, as we were we were seeing in the previous video, we are going to do pirlatura. So we create even more tension on the surface of the dough. That is, by the way, rich of bubbles already, which is a very good sign of a good maturation and of a good fermentation of the dough. Yeah, so now we have these dough balls ready. And the last part will be to move these dough balls into their last containers, meaning that in the, in the containers where they are going to uh, have the second rising and actually the real rising because the one in the fridge was not really a rising, was more of a maturation as I was saying and stressing out before. So let me take the uh, con new containers and I will come back in a few seconds. Good, so I took two containers a smaller one that will be for the small dough ball and a bigger one that is more or less the same that I used before uh, but I will show you how you want to position the dough because if you put it uh, um, in the center from my point of view is not really an, an ideal situation so I will show you what to do in case you have a container that is a little bit bigger than uh, the, um, the, 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 um, the dough, the sides of the dough. Uh, one more important information, uh, please use always containers that can uh, contain indeed uh, two to three times, I would say three times at least the sides of the dough. Because what we want to achieve in, the, in, the, in this phase of the rising, or so in the next phase of the rising, is that we want to have the dough ball going uh, around two and a half to three times how big it was when it started. So once again we will use a bit of oil, just don't use too much because it, otherwise it will ruin our dough. So just a few drops here and a few drops here. That's it, you don't have to use more than that. Again we will just make sure that the oil is everywhere, especially on the uh, side here because this will help dramatically when we are going to uh, put the dough into the flour for the last shaping before going into the baking pan. And let me do the same here. Easy peasy. Get in, cover the borders. Make sure that the dough can grow without being sticky on the container borders. Of course. Okay, good. Now I have the hand full of oil, but that's okay. So I'm, without removing the oil or without cleaning my hands, I'm just going to do again one more round of pirlatura. So we create again tension on the dough ball. And then just to show you better, let's do first the big one. So I will have some space. And look how much smooth is this dough. It's incredible, it's fantastic. This means that we work it well, yeah? It has to be smooth. And with some bubble potentially. So what we do is that we take the bowl and we put it in this case on one side. As you can see here, I am putting it on, on one side. Why? Why? Because in this case, the, the sides of the containers will help the dough grow in and not going just flat on the on the on the ground of the of the container. We want to have it. Want to have a kind of a, a support to make sure that the dough will grow also up and not only on side, because that's the risk when the container is too large compared to the dough sides and as you can see this is exactly the case in this way and let's do the same on the other container so once again we take it from here and look how good is the dough this is fantastic 
And one more thing important, below you want to have it, everything closed, so you don't want to have holes here. That's okay how it is today. And this is one also of the reasons why you are doing this exercise. So why you are doing this movement that is called pirlatura in Italian. And then it's ready. We put it here. And that's it. Now we close it. Again, hermetic. If you don't have hermetic, better to have to use for some cling film, for example. But you want to have them closed because you don't want too much air to influence the, the, the dough itself and that's it so we are now ready to have it growing uh, in, in, in with the with the with my recipe with the recipe that I'm, uh, that I'm sharing on the website uh, or better with the one that I'm sharing for this video specifically it will take probably uh, five to six hours to grow uh, however that this is not a rule so even if you find recipes uh, and uh, on, especially when you find recipes online just keep in mind that what they give to you as a time for rising is a, an indication of more or less how much time the dough will uh, require to grow and to be ready to be shaped and to be put into the baking pan or into the oven anyway what you want to the way you want to uh, think about when the dough ball is ready to be baked is that you want it to grow at least two and a half times so you see here how big it is what we expect to have is that it will cover completely the, the container up to probably almost here. But no worries because I will show you once it's ready, just to give you an idea. When this is the size of the bottle ball, it means that it is ready. If it is not grown yet, it, uh, at that level, it means that it's not ready, so it's better to wait more. If it's going over, it's still okay. Of course, it depends if it is growing too much. Uh, you want to uh, reshape it if you have enough time to do it again because you then have to have another rising but these are these are um, uh, information that I will be sharing uh, later on also on the website so keep following me and keep subscribing to the website and to this channel and I'm going to share also in the future some other details so let's wait for that to to grow so let's wait for the balls to grow and uh yeah we will see we will we'll be I, I will be showing later on during the day how to do the last uh, shaping again and put it into the, the baking pan which is again one part that is kind of important and where you have where you want to practice quite a lot to make sure that the 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 pizza will will grow and will have the right bubbles but the air bubbles uh, after it is cooked. So, see you later. So, let's go ahead with this last phase of the pizza preparation. Uh, we are going to uh, prepare the pizza to go into the baking pan, so we want to stretch it in the proper way. Before we start, I want to share that I prepared the baking pan using some lard on it not too much but yeah this is the one that I use it so this is lard and I prepared it in order to uh, not to have the dough sticking to the to the baking pan even if the flour will help a lot in not having the the, the dough sticking on the on the pan the other thing is that I'm using this flour to uh, prepare the dough to go, to go to, to stretch the dough and to go to the baking pan and this is a, a special flour that is meant just for this use so this is not a flour that is used for the um, a normal baking or not the normal pizza dough but this is just when you have to stretch the pizza it's a special one and I don't expect you to have the same because this is not something that you can find normally in the in the markets but you can use instead of this one you can use the rice flour or you can use the semola rimacinata flour both of them you can easily find in supermarkets the, probably the, 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 the easiest one would be the rice flour and it's it's pretty good to to do the stretching of the dough. So what I'm going to do is that I will prepare a bit the base here and as you can see I removed the watch from my uh, arm and you will see why it shortly. So let me take the dough that meanwhile has been 
growing and rising. If you remember how it was when we added into the, the, the uh, container, it was much, much smaller. So let me open it and still touching a bit the lid, but here we go. Super good. So let's put it there and voila. As you can see, we, we have already more or less the same shape of the baking pan. Now, why I'm having the baking pan just close to the dough? It's not just because I have to show you, but this is because will, um, having both together will help you in understanding. And this is very critical, especially if you do the first, for the first time or for the very few initial times. This will help you a lot in uh, avoid that you have the, you stretch the dough too much. Because when you stretch the dough too much, then it's problematic to put it back into the pan without creating waves and without ruining the dough, essentially. So what I'm going to do is that I'm taking some other flour. I put it everywhere. You don't have to save anything. Just move it. I want to move it a bit more to the center. And what we do, let me see if the camera is taking it well, good. So let me move the camera a bit here so you, would, you, would, you can see exactly what I'm doing. So first of all, you want to start from with the fingers, you want to start from the sides and you want to just stretch this way. It's not just a stretching, you're just removing air. And after you did this a couple of times on sides, you go into the center. Yeah, and as you can see, the dough is already quite stretched almost like on the pan, also the same as the pan. So let me move again back so you can see now how I move into the baking pan. Yep. So what I'm doing now is this movement. I will use my arm this way so that I can remove the excess flour and then I put it into the baking pan where I finish the stretching without touching the dough too much. This is very important. You don't want to touch the dough too much. You have to be very careful and you don't want to stretch in, stretch in or better. You don't want to touch it too much. Yeah, Just arrive into the corners. In this case, we try to do uh, the stretching in uh, having at the end uh, an even surface so we don't have again waves because this is something that is not good for the growing of the pizza. And that's it. So we stop here. I prefer to give to uh, the dough a kind of a rest. As you can see, there are already bubbles, which is a very good sign of a good uh, pizza dough. Uh, at the same time, if you, if you have noticed, when I did the movement of the uh, pizza dough from the uh, from this place to my arm, it was not just uh, it, it was kind of uh, uh, rigid, and that means that we did folding properly and that we mix the ingredients in the proper way. When you don't mix the ingredients in the proper way, you have the dough that is very fluffy. And it's kind of complicated to make this movement and to put it on, on your, on your um, arm because it will just uh, elastically going down. So if, if you notice that it's very soft and it's very elastic, one thing that you can do is that to avoid to do this movement that I did and you try to just move the dough onto the baking pan without even using the, the, the flour and you just use and you just uh, um, you know, stretch the dough into the into the baking pan, starting from trying to put the dough into the center as much as you can, and then moving and then stretching just using your fingers and never, never uh, stretch like these. Or if you want to do it like I did before, you have to do it very, very careful. So for now, I keep this um, having a rest and then I prepare the topping. And after the topping, it goes into the into the oven that I mean, I mean, meanwhile, I will I'm going to uh, warm at 250 Celsius degrees, and uh, this pizza will be will have a topping with um, with some vegetables on it. So we will see shortly.
And we finally arrived at the end of this step-by-step uh, -step guide on how to prepare uh, Italian-style pizza in the baking pan or in the tray, if you prefer. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the content. I hope that I could share with you something that is useful to you. Uh, if you like, uh, you can subscribe to this channel and enable the notifications so you will be notified about new uh, videos that I'm going to post very soon on this uh, YouTube channel. You can also visit my website, italianpizzasecrets.com, where I share some more details and some more content that I uh, think it will be handy and uh, useful for you to make a great, perfect, fantastic Italian-style pizza. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.